defenses. All right, shoot, Dolan. <laughs> Worst possible thing you could say when you walk into a car dealership. I spent five years with Mercedes-Benz, five with General Motors, and the worst thing a person could say when they walk in is if you could just get me to this payment, we got a deal. So your loan's probably still like 19, which means you gotta pay to get out. You're upside down, it's called negative equity. What's going on, everybody? We are officially kicking off episode one of Car Shopping Questions and Answers. I am your host, Deshaun, the auto advisor. Uh, we're going to do this show for about an hour. I'm excited to get really down into the nitty gritty of showing you how you can buy cars, lease cars, and get below market prices. And uh, if you don't know me, I spent 14 years in the car business, uh, five with Mercedes Benz, five with General Motors. And now what we do is we devote our time and our energy into teaching you how to car shop with strategy, how to understand the things that you haven't been taught to understand. So we do rapid fire Q and A. Um, and no matter where you're at, I want you to start typing your questions. We're live on four platforms right now. And this whole broadcast is going to be sponsored by my new book. It's a digital book. It's called Cars from Home, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. There's a link in every single post so you can get your copy at 75% off for the next 30 minutes. But while we're here, let's go deep. And everything I'm going to be teaching you is going to be out of my book. And all of your questions are going to be answered in one of our seven steps. So start typing your questions. I got my man Dolan in the background. Um, I see a lot of people on TikTok, but I don't see the questions coming in on TikTok yet. And TikTok, you all usually are the ones that send the questions the, the fastest. So let's get these questions up. And so Dolan can start loading them onto the show and we can get down to business. So Dolan, kick us off when you're ready. 75%. Yes. 75% off is today. Uh, SS. That's, that's from YouTube. Yes. You can get it for the next 30 minutes. It's normally $97 but it'll be in your inbox in about 30 minutes, uh, in about five minutes um, at 75% off. So uh, let's go Dolan, when you're ready, if you if we've got the first question, let's kick it off. Okay, this one's from YouTube. Hello, thank you for all your advice. We're looking at the car on Copart and it was a salvage title. What is your experience with these types of auctions? So I don't get into teaching about salvage titles. I'm gonna tell you why. I consider that to be like foreclosures. I'm not telling you that there's anything wrong with these cars. What I am saying is they're like foreclosures in real estate, which means you should be learning from someone who actually lives that life every day because there are many risks. When a, net, when a normal person starts entering into a high risk market, the rewards could be high, but also the risks are high. So I would tell you to find someone who's buying, at, buying salvage title, buying at auction and learn from that person. Okay, go ahead, uh, Dolan, shoot the next one up. Okay, this one's from Instagram. I got a lease with Nissan, not looking to go back to Nissan. Should I buy it out and then trade the vehicle in for what I want? This is a great question. Very, first of all, can everybody hit the share button? And if you're on TikTok, can y'all just start tapping the screen and light this up? Because we want to set people free and it takes all of us to do this. It takes the people who are committed to this mission. You want to save money. You also want your friends to save money. Tag somebody. They'll thank you. So this is a great question. The only time it makes sense financially to buy a lease is when you're keeping it another eight years. I'm going to tell you why. I'm teaching something called the eight year rule. Because the what, what, what you guys have to learn is the unseen expense. The unseen expense is depreciation. That's the expense you haven't been taught to see. You haven't been taught to focus on it. It's depreciation. That's the reason why when you buy a car today for 30000 tomorrow, if you tried to sell it, 
it's not worth 30,000 anymore. It's worth 25, it's worth 24, whatever. That's depreciation. So when you keep your car long term, your car's value goes down like this. But when you keep it long term, the depreciation starts to level out. When you buy your lease, all you're doing is buying a pre-owned car. That's all you're doing. Yes, it's a lease that you had, but you have to start seeing it as it's just a used car. So you want to ask yourself, should I buy a used car and then turn around and sell it? That's what you're talking about. Now, Coach Mo, Coach Mojo, we don't buy leases. What we do is we see if we can sell them for a profit. If you didn't know you could sell a lease, I want you to type a one in the chat. We're going to be peeling back a lot of things you're going to discover as you listen and you stay in this community. You can sell a lease. Most of you have heard of the term lease with the option to buy but you're not familiar with lease with the option to sell. You have those rights no matter what. Nine times out of 10, we're gonna exercise our option to sell. And how you sell, there's three ways to sell. There's three different types of what I call an equity assessment. This is step two in my book. You must do an equity assessment. If you have ever dropped your lease off to a dealership and you haven't done this, then you could have given them thousands of dollars without knowing. So what you're going to do is do an equity assessment by calling the bank, finding out how much you owe. You want to get your payoff. That's going to tell you, let's say it's 18,500. That's your customer payoff. Now what you want to do is you want to see who will pay you more than that, or at least that amount. And we don't go to dealerships for that. We go right online. This takes 20 minutes to do. We're going to go to CarMax.com, Driveway, Carvana, Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer, um, AutoNation, and Car Guru Sell My Car. This is going to get us six offers, cash offers. See, our cars are not worth what an algorithm tells us our cars are worth. Our cars are worth what a person is willing to pay for today. And when you see those numbers, that's going to tell you if you have equity versus not having equity. So the short version of your question is, Coach Mojo, you shouldn't be buying your car unless you're planning on keeping it another eight years, because we teach something called the eight year rule, which is if you're not keeping your car eight years, you're not going to outlive the depreciation drop in value. So you shouldn't be buying it. You should be leasing. And I know a lot of you probably, you're, you're, oh, well, Deshaun, I was taught never lease. I was taught don't lease. I was taught don't lease. Well, you're going to find out the more you stay here, as you as you just dive in to financial um, numbers we go over, you're going to see that that's bad advice. And unfortunately, millions of people have been subject to bad advice that has been costing them money. Okay, so we'll go more into detail on that. There's only two ways to beat depreciation. Long-term ownership, that's our eight-year-plus people. If you're keeping your cars, your next car, if your plan is to keep it eight-plus years, I want you to type K in the comments for keeper. Type K in the comments. If your next car, you're like, Deshaun, my next car, I want to keep it at least eight years. I want you to type a K. All right? Now, if you are not keeping your car at least eight years, then you should be shopping for a lease because that's how you're going to avoid depreciation. We're going to talk more about leasing because you cannot just get any lease. You have to get what I call a good value lease. We'll go more into detail on that, but that's the, that's the foundation coach Mojo answer those questions first before you think about anything else. All right, go ahead. Dolan, shoot the next question up, man. Keep typing the questions y'all. We're bringing them from all platforms. This one's from TikTok. What to do if you have no pre-approval letter, even with a 730 score for, okay, great question. We don't focus on pre-approval letters. What we focus on is making sure, all right. So I teach something called the bank bidding war. Everything we're gonna do from now on is gonna be a bid. Could y'all keep tapping the screen on TikTok? I see y'all running the lights up. When y'all keep tapping the screen, what it does is let TikTok know Listen, more people need to get over here because we're talking about something that everyone needs to hear. So I appreciate you. Look, they're running them up. 
what to do if you have no pre-approval letter. So we were taught always get pre-approved, but here's the problem. People got onto it. Whenever we do something and the public starts moving in a way, the big companies adjust to it and they find a way to infiltrate it. Most of the companies that you are trying to get pre-approved from, that I'm trying to get pre-approved from, their goal is to isolate us. Something called restricted pre-approvals. You, I'm gonna tell you what a restricted pre-approval is and why we stay away from them. A restricted pre-approval limits where you can shop. We'll approve you, but only to shop with Carvana. We'll approve you, but only to shop with our dealer network. We'll approve you, but only to shop with a drive time dealer. Mm -mm. Because a pre-approval is the whole purpose when you learn how we shop, which is to shop wide. When you start seeing to shop wide and get multiple offers and see the entire 100 mile radius within your where you live as a, a huge market where people are competing to sell you a car, you'll start seeing why we never want to deal with a restricted pre-approval. So what we do is we use something called the bank bidding war. The only way, how many people have asked themselves, did I get the best interest rate? Type dollar signs. If you've asked yourself ever, you bought a car and you said, did I really get the best interest rate? Type a dollar sign if you've wondered that. See, the only way to get something we call price assurance, which is to guarantee, guarantee. See, these are powerful words that I want you to add to your vocabulary when you're car shopping. We need to guarantee that we got the best interest rate. How do we do that? Getting bids. Experian wrote an article, they allow you to have multiple lenders pull your credit with a hard pull and compete and give you rates within a 15, 14 to 45 day period. Now don't ask me why they say 14 to 45 days. That's the window. I'm gonna teach you how to do it in a way where it'll only take you two days and you're gonna let tons of people run your credit and you're going to guarantee you got the best rate and it's gonna weigh on your score like one hard inquiry. So if one hard inquiry would have dropped your score nine points, natural. We buy a car, a hard inquiry is gonna drop our score. That's natural. But we're gonna get 20 hard inquiries and it's gonna drop our score the exact same way. This is how it works. You do not let anyone run your credit under any circumstances until after you find your car. In my book, I have something called the perfect budget calculator. I created this tool. What it does is it's going to tell you, it's going to give you multiple goals. It's going to tell you exactly what car you can afford. It's going to tell you how to be under your max monthly payment. And you put everything you want to put in, what your max monthly payment is, what your, we use the standard interest rate. So whatever the interest rate is at this time, we use that budget. The only purpose for a pre-approval is to budget. Think about some of you who are homeowners. The only purpose in getting pre-approved was to budget so that you can go buy your house, right? You with me? That's the only purpose. If we don't get pre-approved, we don't know how much we could afford. So when we do, what we do is we take the average interest rate and that's what we're gonna use to estimate our payments. This is in my book. See, I created technology. So some of you are saying, Deshaun, is this just a book? No, it's not just a book. I have links in there. I have links to videos in there. I have platforms that I've created and calculators and tools that I created that I wish I could refer to you. No, but they're only in my book. So you can get the book. I'm gonna teach you how to do things the manual way. Some things you can say, Deshaun, I could do that manually. But if I'm telling you about a tool I created to use, so that it can budget for you, then the only way to get it is to actually get my book. You can get it for 75% off in my TikTok bio. You can get it in my Instagram bio. You can go to Deshaun'sBook.com or you can scan the QR code and get your copy for 75% off for 30 minutes. But when you budget, you know exactly how much you can spend on a car and you go find your car under that budget. The, the, the perfect budget calculator is gonna give you multiple goals. See, here's the problem. When you go out shopping for a car, you notice how you have a budget in mind and you typically tend to go over it. You say, I don't want to spend any more than 500 or I don't want to spend any more than 30,000. But you usually end up going over it because you don't factor in tax. You don't factor in how long the loan. You don't factor these things in. OK, well, how much they said I'm pre-approved for $30,000, but 
What does that equate to on a monthly payment? It's broken. It's a broken system. When we go out, we find the car we're looking for. That's when we are going to now let people run our credit. Never before that. We go out, you find your best deal on a car. That's when you come home and you let multiple people run your credit and fight it out to give you an interest, to give you a loan. See, because if you open up, if you let people run your credit before this, now they're going to give you a time limit. So even this is all answering this young lady's question about pre-approvals. The reason why they're garbage is because if it's a hard pull, they're garbage because now they've started that window that I told you about. You got 14 to 45 days and it starts to count down. Now you're trying to rush and find a car. Some of us, we it might take us three months to find the best deal on our car. If you got a pre-approval and the time is expiring, you're shopping with your back against the wall. Second reason it's garbage is because once they give you a pre-approval, you are going to you are now tied to them and you don't have the opportunity to bid. And, and it's just garbage. So do what I'm telling you to do. When you find your car, that's when you're going to come home and you are going to now let people run your credit. And then you are going to let the dealer see if they can beat it. See, this is a must. I know you may have been taught, oh, I don't let that dealer run my credit. No, make them compete. The bad part is when a dealer is trying to give you an interest rate when you have no offer. That's bad. But when you have an offer, that's when he's trying to beat it. And that's a very different thing. You tell him, hey, I got two, I got seven, I got 7.2 from whatever bank. That's the best offer I got. Okay. Now that dealer goes to work with their seven to 12 bank. Hey, listen, can we beat this? And when he calls you, he's going to tell you one or two things. Hey, good news. I was able to beat that interest rate. In which case, you what? Guarantee you got the lowest interest rate. Or he's going to say, listen, I tried my best. I talked to every bank I got. Nobody could beat that rate. In which case, what? You still what? Guarantee you got the best interest rate. So the only way we're going to be able to do that is with bids. We're going to stop negotiating. We're going to start making people bid. That's what we're all about here. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one up. I'm going to try to get through these. I'm going to try to give. See, I can't do short answers to some questions. Okay, hold on. Yeah, go to, hold on. Link to 75% off is not working. Are y'all able to click it on TikTok? Let me know on TikTok if y'all are able to, uh, if y'all are able to access the 75% off. Okay, this one's from YouTube. My credit score is between 500 and 600. Can I still get a nice car? Great question. You should be focused on getting a great car and you should be, if you folk, all right. My credit score is between 500 and 600. Can I still get a nice car? Under no circumstances do you ever want to compromise on the car. Follow me. You are going to focus on getting a great car knowing I'm probably going to pay more in interest. Paying more in interest is not bad considering your situation. Here's why. That can be fixed. Refinance, that can be fixed. But if you get a bad car, that cannot be fixed. So we have resources. I use a company. I refer to I refer people to Linbuzz. Linbuzz will work with people who have challenged credit. But here's what you got to know. You can't let them dictate how you're going to shop. You must have your own shopping strategy. Now, there's two people, two situations where if you have bad credit, how many years are you keeping the car? That's the question. If it's eight plus years, then no problem. I'm going to get the best car I can find. I'm going to pay a little bit more in interest. But as soon as my credit's good, I'm going to refinance that loan. Problem solved. Second person is Deshaun. I'm not keeping my car eight years, but I need a car now. Perfect. You should be trying to set yourself up for a lease in two years, in which case you want to get the least expensive car that you can get a loan on. 10,000, 12,000. You're going to use that perfect budget calculator or you just want to say 10 to 12,000. You're going to try to find a car in that range. I'm going to tell you why. In two years, when you go to trade out of that car, if you go and buy yourself a 20, 30, $40,000 car, you're going to have a bunch of negative equity. And what that's going to do is that's going to stop you from getting a lease. This is what people do. Oh, Deshaun, I couldn't get a, I couldn't qualify for a lease, so I'm gonna go out. I want to get that Dodge Charger with 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 the big engine in it because I can't sacrifice for two years. I can't be out here 
looking like I don't have a nice car, problem. I can't help you. But if you're willing to sit, because I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. When you get that Dodge Charger, you usually forced your way into it, bought an older one, paying a high payment, high interest. So in two years, when you think you're going to trade out of it and go lease, you're going to have a hard time because the negative equity is going to be so severe. And when you have that six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollar car payment, chances are you might miss one of them. This is a disaster because we can't sacrifice. So what I'm telling you to do is say, all right, if Deshaun's telling me that the best move financially is for me to be leasing because I'm not keeping my cars eight years, I need to be getting great leases, but I can't qualify, then my mission is to qualify. That's my mission. So when I when I when I look at what that take, what do I what do that take? That means I'm gonna get a car now and that's gonna be my sacrifice car. That's gonna be my car that I drive for two years, build my credit. It's not gonna be my perfect car. My perfect car is gonna be when I drive a brand new lease off the lot two years from now. This is my setup car. So I'm going to make sure I get a low price car where I won't miss a payment. I'm going to build that payment history. I'm going to have minimal negative equity. And then in two years, I'm going to make a power move. That's the short term and the long term. That's why it's important to know, is this a long term car or is this a short term car? Very important to know. If it's long term, I told you what to do. You buy a car, refinance later. Short term, you should be setting yourself up for at least in two years. Buy yourself an inexpensive car little put in low down uh low loan little small loan and get ready to trade that in two years but you must get a great car in either situation you can't sacrifice the quality of the car or the whole plan goes to hell your car breaks down midway the plan is scrap scrap the plan so we never compromise so check this out i see every when as soon as you purchase the book i give you a support email because I do not DM me about products. We have there, everyone gets a support email because we want to handle those issues immediately. DMs I barely see. We got, thank God we got 2 million plus followers. I can barely see DM. That's why as soon as you get a book, I say screenshot this screen. If you don't get that book within five to 10 minutes, check your spam, check your junk. Then you go and you um, contact support and we'll make sure we email you that copy manually. OK, because that's what we do. Don't DM. Use that support email so we can make sure we take care of you. All right. Shoot the next one up, Dolan. Great question so far. Uh, what would dealers try to sell you a car that has issues? Don't sign up for these answers. That's why does the sun? Why does the sun rise in the east and set in the west? Some questions are not worth trying to answer. Just plan accordingly and move accordingly, knowing these things are. If the people who are supposed to be taking care of you with cars are not educating you, are not uh, moving with um, integrity, then you better be educated. Remember that. If the people who are supposed to be taking care of your money, when you come to buy a car, lease a car, that's a ten dollars to $100,000 transaction, some of you. If those people are not moving with integrity and you cannot guarantee that. A smile doesn't guarantee that. Talking nice doesn't guarantee that. You better be educated. And the people who are gonna move like the way we're gonna move, the way you're gonna move if you're listening to this, the way you're gonna move if you have my strategies in my book, the way you're gonna move when you learn how to car shop online and make people big, you're gonna be educated where no one can take advantage of you. You're empowered. You're the one in control. You're the prize. You're the one people are competing with to earn their business. And that's what I want for you. All right. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one up. Just keep typing your questions, y'all. We're bringing them in from all platforms. Hello. I put a down payment on a car 45 days ago. They gave me the keys. And now 45 days of dealership says the bank doesn't want to do the deal. The bank says they never said that. Do I take the car back? Uh, reach out to the bank. If the bank has an account for you, then that account is in stone. If they have your name, and they have your name on an account number tied to that car, then it doesn't matter. They could be trying to bring you back and trade that car and do another transaction, which is legit if you fall for it. You get what I'm saying? If you bring that car back and switch it, then let them trade you out of that car, sell you a different car, that's another transaction. But if you have an account number with that bank, then that means that bank is that that deal is signed and sealed. 
That's what you got to make sure, Empress. Go ahead, shoot the next one up, Dolan. This one's from Facebook. I'm about to begin the process of buying a car from a dealership. They're offering me a lowered payment if I go with one of their lenders. Are there any ways to save on this deal? So have you gotten bids? See, did they look? You were programmed to be loyal to dealers. I'm from the industry. I was in the industry for 14 years. I'm teaching people all around the country. We have we've had we have over seven, eight, close to eight thousand customers that have used our stuff and used our product since 2021. We have data from all around the country. There is absolutely no way that you're going to get your best deal ever focusing on one dealer. That would be like you going in into a supermarket and say, hey, no matter what the price of this item is, I'm only buying it from this brand. Or you saying, oh, I'm going to buy a TV. No matter what the, I don't care, I'm just going to walk into Walmart and whatever the best price on the TV is that I see, I'm just going to take that. I'm not going to look online. I'm not going to look on Amazon. I'm not going to look on Best Buy. I'm just going to walk into one store committed to try to get a deal with that store. That's the same thing you're doing. Could y'all keep running the likes up on TikTok? Keep tapping the screen. You're getting value out of this. I appreciate it. We don't do that anymore. That is a recipe. And, and look, I'm going to tell you something, and, and I hope you don't take offense to it. Our grandparents shop like that. In what way in 2024, 2025, almost you know, 20 years, 30 years after the Internet's being invented, you're still shopping like, you're, like our grandparents shopped? Does that make sense? It makes sense when you're like, yeah, Deshaun, that's what I'm doing. But it doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of why am I doing this? It's because that's what you were taught to do. That's why I represent unlearn, relearn. You can't win with what I teach unless you're willing to scrap all that bad knowledge. We don't buy from one dealer. Three transactions that people have been, I'm going to break this down real quick in, in literally a second so y'all understand. There's three transactions that you've been taught to give to car dealers. Three, buying your car from them is one transaction. Who you get your loan from is another transaction. Who you sell your old car to is a third transaction. And many of you have been taught to give the bank, to give the dealer all three. Meanwhile, there are people who only want to give you a loan. They don't sell cars. They want to compete for your loan. There's other people who want to buy your old car. They don't sell cars. They want to buy your old car. Y'all get what I'm saying? It type 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 a uh, type of why for um, yes. If you're understanding that you have to start breaking these transactions into their own transactions, you can't maximize a trans. You can't maximize and guarantee you're getting your best deal mixing three transactions or two transactions into one. You can't do it. We're breaking them up. And now once we break them up, how do we guarantee we get the best offer in each one? Bids. So you understand? So what we're doing is we're breaking. We need to see our old car, our old lease, our old car that we have that we're replacing. Who I'm going to sell that car to is a one is one transaction. And whoever's going to win the bid gets the car. Who I'm going to get my loan from, that's another transaction. And whoever wins the bid gets my loan. Who I'm going to buy my car from, that's another transaction. And who's going to win the bid gets the car, gets to sell me the car. And we do this in 60 minutes. See, what you're going to see, watch this. Let me show you Freena. Freena just picked up her Jeep last week. Look at the deal she got. This is why you're never going to get these deals walking in the dealers. You're never going to be able to guarantee your best deal walking in the dealers. You're going to sit at home and be in control. Look at Freena's deal. She said, look, I'm a proud graduate. Cars from home is that's my that's our video library. And, you know, like I said, I coach people all around the country. She said, I picked up this baby yesterday. Look at the date. 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee anniversary edition, followed the program, used all the scripts. I have scripts in my book. I have scripts that you don't, we don't talk because if you have to talk, you run the risk of messing something up. No offense. I rather you type. If you'd rather type than talk, you know, <laughs> type of one. So contacted the dealers, sealed the deal, 
579 a month. Look at the MSRP on this car. She got a hybrid one, $65,000 vehicle, almost 66. Her best deal who won the bid was a 0.88% lease. That is unheard of in the world. See, 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 I teach something called the 1.5% rule for knowing when you're paying too much for a lease. The 1% rule has been around since way before I even got in the car business. If you could lease a car for 1% of the, of the MSRP, no money down, no money out of pocket, you, you stole the car. This is 0.88%. I owe it all to Deshaun. Without this program, I wouldn't have had the tools to shop from home. Shopping from home the right way is how you're going to win. Some of you may have tried, Deshaun. I tried. It seems hard. Yeah, because once the internet was invented, internet salespeople got invented. And internet salespeople are trained to make it hard. to They got to make money. And, it, and what they're going to do is they're going to make it hard for you to get a deal done because half the time you don't even know the information you need to give them to get a quote. Hey, I got to give you the where I work at. See if I qualify for any rebates. I got to tell you what, oh, what, what, what cars are in my household? See if I qualify for any rebates. I got to tell you, you know, what, what, what affiliations I have. I got to tell you what my date is. I have something called a no later than date. What's my deadline? Hey, I can buy a car to shine. I don't need a car for about three months. Should I start shopping now? Yes, you should. Because if you get in the market now and you can buy a car today, but you don't need it for three months, that's called leverage. See, most people walking in a deal is they're like, hey, I need a car this week. I need a car today. That means the car that's coming six weeks from now, they can't they can't benefit from that. You can. But you got to learn how to give this information. And this is why when you try to shop online, you have a hard time because you're not, you don't know you're defensive and you're like, I'm not giving a deal of what they need. But I'm also not staying in a position where I don't give them too much information where they can use it against me. So that's what we'll learn. Everything I'm teaching you is if I can boil it down to a couple simple things. Mastering the Science of Shopping from Home. That's why my book is called Cars from Home, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships, and Making People Bid for Your Business. We can sum that. Once you master those two things, you're going to save more money in 60 minutes than you ever save going in the dealers two, three, four times, spending hours in there. And you're going to have price assurance, which is guaranteeing that you couldn't have saved any more money. That's what Freena has. That's what I want you to have. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one up, brother. Keep typing your questions, y'all. We're bringing them in from all platforms. Let me bring this. Let me bring Freena's pick down. All right, perfect. Shoot the next one up. All right, I'm trying to fly through these, y'all, but I can't give short answers. You get what I'm saying? I got to give you the full answer. Can you get a great deal on the lease vehicles on a Range Rover? Okay, great question. You can't control the lease program. The lease program is what's going to dictate when the dealer wins the bid. Let's say a dealer, I always teach when you start getting bids on a lease or on, you should see a, about a, a at least a three to $5,000 difference from your best offer to your worst offer. Now, sometimes it's more drastic than, than that. You're doing it, you'll see a $7,000 difference from your best offer to your worst offer, but you need to see a spread. I'm going to tell you why. 80% of dealers are overpriced. So when you start getting offers, if you don't get enough offers to where you see that spread, you haven't gotten enough offers. I teach you need to get at least five. In my book, I have something called the 25 to five strategy. So once the whole purpose of a bid is to find the dealer that's willing to discount the car and sell the car lower than all their competitors. And if there's any rebates to disclose them to you. That's only going to come through bids because you don't know who you're dealing with. An 80% dealer is not going to tell you all the rebates. An 80% dealer will tell you, okay, yeah, there's no rebates, but there actually is. 80% dealer is going to say, all right, yeah, there's a $1,000 rebate, hey, but there's actually $2,500. So you can't depend on an 80% dealer. You have to get multiple offers and reveal who the actual dealers are who is going to win the bid. Now, once that happens on a lease, the lease program is in the background. And if the lease program is trash, then you're going to be over 1.5%. And over 1.5% means the payment you're, you're paying when it's more than one and a half percent of the MSRP. That means you're paying too much for a car you're giving back. See, I was concerned to start making lease videos because I knew when people started finding out how good leasing was, 
they were going to just go into dealers and say, hey, work me up a lease. Problem with that is if you don't know how to get a great lease, you're going to get a bad lease, sign up for it, and it's still going to be better than your history of purchasing. So you're going to think you won, but you left thousands of dollars on the table. So I don't want to teach you about going after leases until you learn how to get multiple offers so you can reveal the best deals. But what we do is we always with leases have three options because we can't control the lease program. And if we can't control the lease program, we need to have a bet because I'm not look, y'all. And it, There's tons of companies out there that are offering bad leases and people are signing up for them, especially some luxury brands. Every car has a different lease program. Luxury brands will say, hey, we're going to put a bad lease out there because we know we can ego sell people, which means, hey, come on, Mr. Jones. Come on. How long you been driving Range Rovers? Man, I've been driving them for 12 years. All right, well, come on. You really gonna you really gonna leave Range Rover over a couple dollars? Yeah, but I mean, the lease seems kind of high. It seems like, you know, I'd be better off buying the car. No, no. If you don't know that, they're gonna ego sell you. So until people stop signing these bad leases, we are not going to get to the point where some of these banks say, all right, we gotta stop with the bad lease deal. Now, conversely, opposite end, there's phenomenal lease deals out there. Like, <laughs> you saw Rena. I'll show you a couple more before we jump off the show. So it's harder to get a great lease deal because there's a lease program. It's easy to get a car if you're buying brand new through bids. Easy to save thousands of dollars. But we, we, can't, we can't dictate the lease program. And we're not going to sign it. I will never say to you, sign a bad lease. Dealer will tell you, oh, look, I'm beating all my competition. Phil, man, oh, look, I'm saving you like six grand. Man, I look, I wish I could, I wish I could lower the payment, but the lease program's not good. That's okay. That's why it only takes us 60 minutes to get these quotes. We don't want to spend hours to find out it's a bad lease program. We pick a car, we get our bids. Within two days, we're gonna know if it's a bad lease program, in which case we move to our plan B vehicle. Okay. So everything I'm teaching is out of my new book. It's called Cars from Home. It's a digital book. It's called Cars from Home. Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. Your goal is to master the science of car, just car shopping from home and to start making people bid for your business. All right, that's going to—that's everything it's going to show you in seven steps, and you can get it for 75% off in my TikTok bio, or you can get it in my Instagram bio, or you can get it in my, uh, you can go to deshawnsbook.com or scan the QR code. Go ahead, Dolan, shoot the next one up. This one's from TikTok. How do I get out of negative equity? Three options for negative equity. That's it. And after I tell you these three options, I, I need you to know the cause. The cause is super important because I can give you a Band-Aid, but if you don't know the cause, you're going to continue to be in trouble. Three options. Two, lead to a new car. One, does it. Negative equity is the bad credit to people with good credit. Because if you have too much, it will stop you from getting your car. So your first option with negative equity is to pay it off. Here's what happens. You wanna use that equity assessment process that I told you about a little while ago. You're gonna call your bank, find out what you owe. After you find out what you owe, you're gonna to go to those websites I mentioned, CarMax, Driveway, Carvana, uh, Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer, um, uh, Auto Nation, Car Guru, sell my car. That's going to give you six cash offers. These people are bidding on cars every day. They usually put their best offer out there. In 30 minutes, you'll have six offers. They pay more than dealers on average. In fact, two or three of those bids you're going to get are actually from dealers. So we want, it's a nice mix of offers. Three of them are from online car buyers, CarMax, Driveway, Carvana. Three of them are from car dealers, local car dealers. So it's a nice mix, but they're bidding. That's going to lead to the least amount of negative equity because remember, when you get bids, you're getting the most value. You're getting the most savings. You're getting the most money when you are getting bids. So let's just say you pull your you pull your payoff and it's 16000 Your highest bid is 14,000. That means you have a $2,000 negative equity gap. You are much better off coming up with the 2,000 and paying that car off and going into your next transaction clean. 
that is the best way to go because now if you can't do that i'm going to tell you why it's the best way when i tell you the second way to get out of negative equity if you can't pay the difference then that means you must bring that car you can't do a separate transaction with that car because you need the dealer who you're going to buy the car from to wrap the negative equity into the new deal. They are still going to win the bid. You must, in all cases, only deal with dealers who won the bid. But once they win the bid to sell you the car, now when you come to them, you're going to now bring your old car into it and see what it's worth to them. When you see what they can pay for it, you are going to see in most cases, it is not going to be the highest number you got from the online buyers. So if the online buyer's highest number was 14, maybe that dealer can only pay 12,200, 12,500. And you might say to them, hey man, but CarMax was offering me this. They're not going to be able to match it in most cases. It's just not possible because they can't win both bids. If you start buying cars for the most money, selling cars for the least money, it won't take you long to be out of business. That's probably what happened to Vroom. They were buying cars for the most money and then trying to sell them and they weren't able to make the profit. So we must separate the process, but if you can't pay the difference, you now must bring your old car into the process after a dealer wins the bid, introduce them, hey, this is the car. Now they've already won the bid, they beat all their competition to sell you a car. So they, they, they've already proved they're a 20% dealer. Now you're bringing your old car and you're going to see that. If I would have sold it to them, I would only had 2,000 negative equity. But bringing it over to this transaction, I actually got like 3,700 negative equity. And there's nothing we can do about that. That's why I said the plan A is always if you can cover the difference, cover the difference. If you can't, that's your only option. Now... Here's the third thing. I told y'all two things lead to a new car with negative equity. One doesn't. If you have too much negative equity, you have to understand loan to value ratios. Loan to value ratios have nothing to do with credit scores. That's why I call negative equity the bad credit to people with good credit. When you bring your negative equity over, the bank is only going to lend a certain percentage above the price of the car. So if the price of the car is 30000 and you have good credit, the bank might only lend 36. They might only lend 20% more, 25% more than the price of the car. So if you're coming over and you're trying to do a no money down deal, which is what we do, we shot with no money down. If we can make no money down deals and we can get the car payment to where we want, if we can get the whole deal to where we want with no money, that's what we do. Um, you know, it's different when interest rates are higher. We typically put more money down to avoid paying more high, high interest. But when it comes to our shopping, we always shop with no money down. So if you're trying to do a no money down deal and you are trying to bring all this negative equity over and trying to not just finance the price of the car, but the tax, the fees and negative equity, you run the risk of blowing out the loan to value ratios, in which case you're not going to be approved. You could have a 900 credit score. They're going to tell you you got to put money down because you can't finance all that negative equity. So it depends on how much. How much? And if that's too high and you can't put down money to actually make a difference, then you're going to need to stay and pay down that car for a couple more months or even maybe a couple more years to lower the amount of negative equity. So that's how you get out. That's all in my book. Three ways to get out of negative equity. But what you got to know is the cause. Only legitimate reason for negative equity is, to, is because you had an emergency and you had to switch cars. Now, if we go by things that can be prevented, like Deshaun, I bought a car, it's breaking down. Well, that means you bought the wrong car. We can prevent that with knowledge. Now, if you say, Deshaun, I just wanted a new car and I switched it, that's not, that, that, that's, that's, that's costing you. And because you don't understand leasing, see, 90% of the time, 10% we give to emergencies. Deshaun, man, I had a two, I had a sedan, then I had twins, I had triplets, I need to get an SUV, I got to switch the car. Understood. Legitimate reason. Switch the car, stay in it long term, pay off, and keep the car. But 90% of the time is people don't, you don't understand leasing. 
and you buy your cars, you take out five, six, even God forbid, seven year loans, you switch these cars in three years, four years, you always have negative equity and you're overpaying by thousands of dollars. That's the cause. That is the cause. I've been doing this since 2006. The reason for most people, most of your, your negative equity is because you haven't learned the lease yet and you're buying cars, but you're a short-term person. All right? And the more you stick around here, the more you'll understand why that's a, that's a mistake. If you get my book, you'll understand, oh, I've, I've been doing this wrong. Now, I was taught this. I don't blame you. You were taught that. But when you learn, when you do better, when you know better, you do better. And that is my goal is to make sure you know better. My pleasure, Reggie. You said thank you for everything. My pleasure. Absolutely. Everything I'm teaching y'all is out of my new digital book, Cars From Home, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. You can get your copy for 75% off as part of our launch in my TikTok bio, in my Instagram bio, or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com. There's a link in the comments, or you can scan the QR code if you're watching us on the television, and you can get your copy for 30 minutes. Once that timer expires, book goes back up to $97. So get your copy before the timer runs out. Go ahead, Dolan, shoot the next one up. All right, this one's from YouTube. Appreciate all of your content. Thank you. We are looking to buy our teenage daughter her first car. Is there any downside to purchasing outside of a name franchise dealer? No, if you do your due diligence, because there are there's 100,000 plus used car dealers in the country. Let's assume 80% of them are trash. As long as you are sorting, when we shop for used cars and you want to ask yourself the eight year, eight year rule question, if you're not keeping this car, if you don't think your daughter's keeping this car eight years, then you should be shopping for a lease for her. Now, if you say uh, the only difference, um, there is one, there is one exception to the eight year rule for those of you who are buying inexpensive used cars, $10,000 used cars, $7,000 used cars. That's different. That's different. I call these smart cars, not the little smart cars. It stands for saving money at the right time. So if you're buying these cars, my brother does this. He buys pre-owned cars. He gets them 10,000, 7,000, 5,000, and he drives them. He, he pays very little money. Sometimes he sells them and makes a little money. That's different. But the mainstream cars, if you are not keeping them eight years, 15, $20,000 used cars that you're buying, you're going to see the eight-year rule is, 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 is the gospel. You should be buying cars if you're keeping longer than eight years. You should be shopping for aggressive leases if you're not keeping eight years. So let's assume you're going to keep this car eight years. When we are buying from used car dealers, y'all, we are absolutely shopping 100-mile radius, at least. That's usually where we start. And then we're going to search, and we're going to, we're going to narrow down based on title history, based on service records, based on accident history. And then we need to verify that the price that they advertise online is legit because there is something going on right now. It's been happening for a few years. They know you're, you're looking for online prices. So what they do is they put a price online that they don't intend to honor. So the first thing, with, so we narrow it down based on those things. And when we get to this final step where we got our top three, top five choices, we need to see who's, at, who's gonna do bogus fees, who's gonna try to hit us with bogus fees, in which case we eliminate them. And then we narrow it down to the best one and we need to pull the original. Listen, who's bought a, who's going to be buying a used car? I want you to type a U. If your next car you're keeping for more than eight years is going to be a used car, type a U in the comment. I mean, in the comment section. Or if you've purchased a used car in the past, type a U in the comment. Type a U in the comment. Okay. So, man, I see you. Felicia, I see you. Miss Bambi, I see you. Reginald, I see you. Okay. So we got a lot of people. Wrote, okay. All right, we got a lot of people who are going to be buying a used car or have bought a used car in the past. What I just told y'all is how we're going to talk about how we're going to get a quality used car. Plus, I do something. Step four in my process is we have to do a longevity check. Some of these cars have data that shows they don't last more than 80,000 miles before the transmission goes out. If you don't know that, then there's nothing you can do but be surprised when the transmission goes out at 78,000 miles. So we always want to do a longevity check on Google. We search these things. But the other way, the what I just told y'all is how we make sure we're getting a quality car. Accident, um, title history, service records, accident history. But when it comes to now the value, Deshaun, how do I make sure I'm actually getting a great price? How do I make sure that the car I'm buying is the best price in the market? 
we need to know the original price of the car. We need to know what the car was brand new. Because what you've been taught is to focus on what the website tells you. Is this a good deal? Great deal. Below market. Mm -mm. Because websites, their job is to be accountable to the people paying them. And if they were telling you that this car that you're looking at for 30000 was originally 38000 and it's actually only being discounted 8000 from when it was brand new, if they were telling you that, then no one would be buying those cars, in which case no one would be paying them to list their cars on those websites. So they're not accountable to you or me. They're accountable to who they who pays them. So we find out through the window sticker what the original price was. Car, car, um, Carfax has agreements with some brands where they will actually give you the original window sticker. But we must get the original window sticker. And when we get the original window sticker, that's going to tell us the discount with something I call the true value percentage. We created this. We created this. The true value percentage is the discount from the price when it was new. And that's all that matters when you end up choosing a car. Give you an example as we wrap this question up. If you're looking at three, you're looking at three Honda pilots. You've narrowed it down to three Honda pilots. They're all within thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars of each other. One's thirty thousand, one's thirty thousand five hundred, one's thirty one thousand. Similar mileage, similar title history, similar everything. We get stuck right there. We don't get stuck when we get the original window sticker and we see that one of those Honda Pilots brand new was 45000 One of them brand new was 49000 One of them brand new was 53000 You see how immediately access to that information separated the value? They all look similar. Like, type dollar signs if you just if you if you got that revelation. If you understand that just that bit of information, I'm looking at three cars. They all look similar. Dag, they all look good. Similar mileage, similar price on these websites. Which one do I pick? Man, I'm stuck. Knowing the original price, one's 46, one's 49, one's 53. The one that's 53 immediately becomes val way more valuable than the other two. That's what we're talking about. See, it's my job and my mission is to show you how to car shop online, show you how to master the science of car shopping online, show you how to make people bid for your business, and to show you where the hidden money is that you have not been trained to see. Everything I'm teaching is in my book. I don't hold back on these lives. You guys could tell. But if you like to shine, I want all this information in one place. I want to be able to use this as my car shopping Bible for the rest of my life. Digital book, Cars from Home, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealership is in, uh, in avoiding dealerships in my TikTok bio, in my Instagram bio, and it's 75% off as part of our launch. Get your copy, use it, um, and win. All right, let's go, Dolan. Shoot the next one in. Great questions today. Let's go. Keep typing them, y'all. We're going to try to get through as many as possible. How many miles can you drive a leased vehicle? Great question. Many of you were taught that you have to take what they give you. Or some of you were taught they only do 10,000 miles a year on a lease. All of that was bad information. You pick the mileage on your lease and there are leases that go up to 30,000 miles. Now, some of you might say, well, who drives 30,000 miles a year? Who drives 25,000 miles a year? If you drive 25 or 30,000 miles a year, type HM in the comments for high mileage. So when you think about that depreciation curve that I told you about, your car's value normally, if you're a normal driver, your car's value goes down like this. If you're a high mileage driver, your car's value goes down like this. And so how, uh, the mission is always to avoid the unseen. This is the unseen expense. I want you to always keep this in mind because as long as you keep this in mind, Buying versus leasing is going to be paramount to you because you want to avoid this. If you're buying cars two, three, four, five years, switching them out, you're switching them out when they're losing the most value. But long term, the value cools off. The depreciation levels out. You don't lose as much value over the years. Some of you have cars that's been outside for eight, nine, ten years. 
That car is going to be worth about the same amount it's worth today, a year from now. You've won. That's the goal to get to that level. If you're buying, if you're like Deshaun, I'm not keeping a car eight, nine, 10 years. I'm not going to ever reach that level. Then you should be shopping for leases to avoid the depreciation hit. So when it comes back to 83rd degrees question, you can tailor a lease up to 30,000 miles a year if you want. And here's where I learned this. I was a manager at Hyundai for six weeks. Guy came in. He was returning his lease on a Hyundai Sonata. I was doing the lease return for him. And I said, hey, you leased us? He said, yeah. Yeah, I always lease. I'm in sales. I'm on the road every day. Uh, I used to buy my cars. And, you know, I would have a bunch of negative equity all the time. I was just losing thousands of dollars every time I went to replace the car. It wasn't worth what I owed on it. And I just kept rolling over. I stopped doing that when I found out about leasing. Now, same time he's telling me that I know that I've also sat with people who came in with high mileage with 10, 15 grand of negative equity. So what he's telling me, I've experienced. And I'm trying to help these people and dig them out of this hole and help them get another car, but they have a ridiculous amount of baggage from the old car. So he told me that and I saw his payment. And I said, man, this payment is only like $175 a month more than a really good deal on a regular lease. And so from then, from then I understood. I'm gonna teach people that you need to understand if you get a great lease deal and then you bump the mileage up from 12,000 to 22,000 or whatever you need, you're going to pay thousands less than if you bought the car and just took that depreciation hit. You bring that car back with 75,000 miles in three years. The car is worthless, but you still owe $17,000 on it. That's the difference. So leasing mileage, you pick it and you can customize it up to any amount. But we always shop for 12,000 miles a year. Always. We don't shop for high mileage leases. When we get our quotes, if you're using what's in my book, the 25 to 5 strategy, we get our quotes with 12,000 miles a year. And once somebody wins the bid, then we convert the bid. We tell the winning dealer, hey, could you show me what it, what the payment's going to be with 18,000 miles a year? And then we customize the lease if we're going to do any down payment. We always customize after we've identified the winning dealer. Great question. Great question. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one up. Great questions today. All right, keep typing them, y'all. What advice would you give a first-time buyer who doesn't want a car note? Then go save up your cash and go get the best car you could afford. But why is it we always, Whitney, just send a, send an email to support. If anybody, if you're having trouble getting your book, just send an email to support. We'll send you a copy manually. Oftentimes, it's a little one one letter is different in the email. So that's why as soon as you purchase, I always give you that support email so that you could we can make sure you get your book. OK, but what advice would you give to a first time buyer who doesn't want a car? note? save up your money, get the best car you can afford. But here's what I want to ask you. Why is it that the only time we want to avoid a monthly payment is with a car? We don't say to the electric company. I don't want a monthly payment. We don't say to the gas uh, to the water company. We don't do we. Most of us who are buying a house, we have a mortgage. Most of us who are renting, we pay rent every month. Why is it that the only thing that we say we don't want a monthly payment on is a car? Why? Now, I'm not telling you paying cash for cars is bad. But I'm telling you that if you're dealing with a mindset that is, I'm going to pay cash and save up and get a car that is less than a quality car because I don't want a monthly payment. So I'm going to get a car, save up, scrape together some cash and get a car that is less than I could actually get if I used a little leverage, little leverage, little loan. See, there's something called over leveraging. I'm going to take a seven, eight year loan to afford a car. That's called over leverage. That means you're trying to get a car that you truly can't afford, but you're going to use the bank's money to actually do it. That's over leverage. That's like going in and saying, hey, I'm going to get a 50 year mortgage because 
I don't want to buy a $300,000 house, $400,000 house. I want to buy a $600,000 house. So I'm going to get a 50-year mortgage so that I could afford the monthly payment. When you do this, you when you when you do this, there's again cash buyers. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm concerned with the mindset, the reasons why. Because the reason why it makes sense to pay cash is to avoid the interest if interest rates are high. Seven, eight, nine percent, you want to pay cash? Great. But there are people who come into the deal. I was blessed to work to work in some very affluent towns, white collar and blue collar towns. So I had people making 30, 40,000 a year. I had people making 30, 40,000 a month. And what was interesting to me is those who were able to afford paying cash for the car could write a check because when I would ask them, how are you going to pay for the car? They would ask me, well, what are the rates? If I had a 0% interest rate or 1% or 2%, if their money was making money for them, they wouldn't put it into the car because they see the car as a depreciating asset. What does that truly mean? When I put 30,000 into the car, what is my 30,000 worth to me in five years? Let that sink in. Anybody who's paying cash for a car, if you're bringing money out of stocks where you're getting 8%, 7%, 10%, bringing it out of real estate where you're getting 10%, 12%, 15%. When you put that 30000 in a car, what's that car worth in five years, y'all? What is a $30,000 car worth in five years? Average miles, 60,000 miles driven on it, 30000 What is it worth in five years? Throw some numbers out there. Throw some numbers out there. Let's see. See what we come up with. My guess is 30,000 new that car in five years is probably worth like 14. Okay, Pink Beauty Butterfly said 13. 19 is too generous, I think. 17, 12. See, some people may be confused about this seller's market we had for three years because you might have just sold the car in three years and made some money over the last three years. That market's gone. So you might have really said to Sean, I bought a car for 30 and I sold it in three years. I sold it in 2022 and I got 23 for it. Well, that's never going to happen again unless we have another, you know, worldwide inventory shortage, in which case resale values go up. Normal market, yep, 12, 13, 14, 15 generously. So a person who's looking at their cash and what their cash is doing for them, they look at that. I put that money in my car, 30,000. That money could have been in the market and that 30,000 in five years could have earned me another six grand of interest, seven grand. In which case I'm up, but at that thirty thousand in the car is worth now fifteen or fourteen. So these are the things I don't teach one size fits all. I teach custom. I teach. It depends on what you're doing with your money. If your money's invested and interest rates are low, then leverage a little bit. If your money's not invested and you're like Deshaun, I got my money in the mattress. I got my money in the bank. I'm not really doing anything with it. All right, pay cash. Keep things low. Keep things low. If interest rates are high, pay all the cash, higher down payments, get the loans out of here faster. That's why, see, one size fits all car buying advice. I hate. That's what has failed you. This one size fits all formula. Everyone should do this. Everyone should pay cash. Everyone should do get a used car. That one size fits all. No one should lease. One size fits all formula. Fails every time because it doesn't take into account real finance. All right, go ahead. Great question. Go ahead, Dolan. See, and I'll answer the question and then go into a little spinoff answer. All right, this one's from Instagram. If I want to keep my car for eight years, should I finance the car? Absolutely. The goal is to get the best car and the best value. So if you want to, if you say, if you can't pay cash and you say, I want to get a better car, what I teach is when you, when, when you start budgeting, you are going to now see, can I get a new car or do, can I, is my budget for a used car? The goal is to get everything you need. And really, if you could get everything you want, even better. What's the difference, Deshaun? Well, needs is I got to have three rows because I got four kids. Needs is I need a car that has enough power to get me on the highway because I'm on the highway a lot and I can't have an underpowered car. That's a need. A want is I want the leather. 
I want the big sunroof. So you must get all your needs at all times. You cannot sacrifice needs. I want y'all to put these two things into very important buckets, needs and wants. Needs and wants is the goal. Once the budget gets compromised, once you get out there, if you see I can't get the car I want with everything I need, everything I want, the wants have to scale back. The wants have to scale back, not the needs. I had a woman walk in the Mercedes when I was there. And she was like, hey, I want the big truck because I got kids. I need the three rows. And once we worked out the deal and the numbers, she saw the numbers and she was like, oh, that's above my budget. But what about the two row one? What about the smaller one? I said, didn't you say you need three rows for the kids? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. See, she's about to take a need out to get a one. Does that make sense? So needs and wants are the big things. Needs will make you switch the car because you didn't get what you need. And when you switch the car, you lose money. So when you didn't get what you need, you will switch the car and lose money. If you didn't get what you want, that's a little, that's easier to bear. Needs is like from day one, this car is not doing what I needed to do. So we must get our needs first. And that's what we talk about. So then you choose, do I want, can I budget, get me a new car or a pre-owned car? And once you make that decision, you just go out and you're now shopping the market. I use, uh, in my book, I have something called the multiple marketplace strategy. This is when we shop for used cars. We're on all the marketplaces. We're seeing the whole market as one big marketplace. Everywhere cars are, we are looking and we're narrowing it down to our best top three, top five. And then we're taking the finish. We're taking one across the finish line. You can't get below market deals on a used car until you see what the market is. See, let's see. Let me, let me, let me go deep on this for a quick second. The goal for me, if you're t if you're learning from me, you your tr your goal is to get below market deals, below market leases, below market. You saw Freena's lease. That's a below market lease. That's not a lease that you see advertised that people are getting. If so, below market pre-owned cars. In order for you to know, get a below market pre-owned car, you got to know what the market is. So sometimes you're going into one dealer and you're looking and saying, okay, let me negotiate with him. That's a mistake. You don't know what the market is. When you see the low side of the market on a used car, now you're able to see, again, if you're shopping the right way, there's always a spread because there's always people untrained who are going to pay the higher prices. They're going to walk into those dealers. They're going to go back and forth, take $2,000 off. They think they won, but you were you were negotiating with the, one of the higher price dealers. So because he took $2,000, $3,000 off, you think you won, but you were at the wrong dealer to begin with. So once you actually see the low side of the market, you, we zero in on that. And we zero in on that, and we look to take one of those deals across the finish line. Can't get below market deals if you don't know what the market is. That's why when we look at used cars, we're not looking to buy the first day. We're not looking to buy the second day. Sometimes some of you are like, Deshaun, I got a couple months. You might want to watch the low side of the market. You might want to, we always get alerts. When we go in, if this is all in my book. If you don't want to, if you don't, if you like to shine, I want to know all of this. I need this in my hand. It's in my book, it's, uh, Cars from Home, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealers, 75% off in my link, in my bio, TikTok, in my bio, Instagram, or go to Deshaun'sBook.com or scan the QR code. But when we, when we are getting these, when we are looking at the low side of the market, you might want to watch it. You might want to watch it and see, okay, and then we have alerts on. So every new car that pops up on these marketplaces, we get an email immediately. So we get an email immediately. And if I know that the low side of the market is 22, 23, the minute that car comes on, I'm going to be one of the first ones on it where everyone else is going to hesitate. When a dealer gets a new car, typically a person who doesn't know the market, they're going to go in there and they're going to be like, all right, is this really a good deal? Meanwhile, we know the market. So we know in a minute, I'm going to snatch that deal before anybody even knew it was there because the best deals do not last. And that only comes from knowing the market. All right. Go ahead. Shoot the next one up, Dolan. Great questions today. Um, This one's from YouTube. What can I do to increase my confidence so I can negotiate more intelligently? Stop negotiating and start making people bid. Who's not a good negotiator? Type me. You're not a good negotiator. Type me in the comments. Not a good negotiator, type me in the comments. Okay, that's most of you. And I'm a good negotiator. 
but you can't get guarantees being a negotiator. Pay attention to what I'm saying. I'm a good negotiator. I did it for a living. But I can't guarantee the lowest price negotiated. The lowest price only the guarantee of the lowest. Price. I could be a good negotiator. Negotiator is always going to leave wondering if you go back and forth with somebody back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You always leave wondering, could we could I've gotten a little more? That's not a guarantee. That's not price assurance. Bids. Guarantee because I'm getting five to seven offers. I'm having out of, uh, in my case, I teach the 25 to five strategy. We're connecting with 25 dealers. We're getting five to seven bids. Whoever wins the bid win. That means you beat 25 dealers to earn my business. That means I guarantee that I paid the lowest price and I don't have to talk. That's why in my book are scripts, online scripts. That's the one part that I can't teach you. I can't teach you. It's not that I'm holding back. I can't teach you what my scripts are that are copy and paste. When they say, hey, when can you come in? My script says, hey, well, I'm actually going to be handling my whole transaction online. Oh, actually, well, we don't we don't quote online. OK, that's not what other dealers are saying. Should I remove you from my list? See what I'm saying? When we're copying and pasting and we know what to say to everything they're going to type. Now we move things forward. We keep it on our agenda. This is all in my book in my video library. This is what the people who have learned from me for the last three years have been doing. That's why you see people like Freena. That's why you see people like Pierre, you know, got himself. He came in, got a 22 CX-5. Very big thanks to Deshaun, the auto advisor, educating and empowering me to control the entire purchasing process. The perfect budget calculator really helped me figure out what I could realistically afford. With the true value percentage, we talked about that earlier in the show. Everyone purchasing a used car True value percentage is what we use to make sure we win price wise. Um, I spotted the best deal, six similar listings, saved over 20 percent off the original MSRP. I also shop for my own financing. See how we break these transactions down. You see how he's breaking the transactions down. That's how we get we get bids in each category. Also, I shop for my own financing, got the dealer bank to match it. See, so we're not doing the shop for my own. Oh, I'm not going to let that deal run my credit. He knows the bank bidding war. The bank bidding war is all these people are going to bid. So I guarantee I got the best price on my used car I bought. I guarantee I got the best loan because the dealer couldn't beat it, but they were able to match it, which means it saved me the time. I didn't have to go through that. And the dealer, see, we guarantee that's what I want for y'all. And the icing on the cake, learning about bogus fees and walking away from dealers, not willing to remove them. Now, the walking away, he's talking about physically, not physically. He's talking about next, next, not physically because he we're home. We're not going into dealers walking away. Some of you say, Deshaun, if I don't get a good deal, I just walk away. That means somebody wasted your time. And when you walk away, you still need a car. So you're not hurting the dealer when you walk away. Someone's going to buy that car, even if it's overpriced, and they're going to look at you and say, well, you still need a car. So it's really your loss. When you learn to do this while you're in your living room, you'll understand I don't need to walk away ever because I'm in control. No one's going to waste my time. And this only comes from mastering the science of shopping from home. That's why my new digital book is called Cars From Home, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. Go get your copy for 75% off. Use it. Everything is in there from high mileage driving strategies to leasing to giving you a video to help you understand leasing. Some of you are like Deshaun. I was taught in all my life never to lease. If that's you, type me. What you're going to see is I link you to a video from the Cars From Home library where I actually break down for you leasing versus buying. So by the numbers so you can understand some of you, are, that's what it's going to take. You've been you've been programmed so bad about leasing. You need to see it by the numbers to understand that this this is costing me money, not understanding this. So that's in there. Purchasing high mileage driving strategies, links for people with bad credit and how you're going to get your cars even with bad credit. It's all in there. Get your copy for 75 percent off for the next 30 minutes. Once the timer expires, it goes back to ninety seven dollars and win. Use it and win. Um, listen, we're hour and look, we're hour 15 minutes in. We want to keep these broadcasts, these episodes, it's episode one. You know, if you are uh, subscribed to my email list, you'll know when we're live. 
uh, you'll know when we'll we'll be doing these shows and you can hop on with us. We we, we want to do we you know because you see all the questions you know the the only way I could get through all the questions is by giving y'all little short little one word answers that what is that going to really do for you so yeah we might only get through 15 18 questions because I'm giving you the thorough answer and when you see that a car is the second most expensive purchase behind a house you'll appreciate the thorough answer. No one's gonna buy a house and ask about financial literacy and expect a one word answer. So we shouldn't do it with cars. When cars, we're gonna buy more cars than houses. So get your book, y'all. We will be back. We'll be back for another episode very soon. If you're on my email list, you'll know. Um, and I appreciate everybody for tapping in. This is episode one. We got a lot more coming and we're gonna keep dropping these Jews. Keep unlearning, keep relearning. For the people that got the book, thank you. And for the people who continue to help share this message, appreciate you. We'll see you on the next one.